Hey everybody. So here it is, literally the night before I go back to work after my week off. And of course, the Porta Cube system, my take to work system, the uh, Solid State Drive decided to leave the chat tonight. Yeah. And I don't think it was just a Solid State Drive failure. I think something took it out. If you look on the internet, there is some art, there's some information out there about Windows 11 25H2 and 24H2. A bad update that um, causes the OS to is either constantly write to the SSD or write to it in a certain pattern. It's really strange. Now, when I noticed this issue, which I'll explain in a moment, I looked in my update history on this system. It's right here, of course. Um, and I didn't see I didn't see those updates listed, so I'm not really sure exactly what was going on. But one thing I noticed was tonight I signed into this thing. It been sitting in my spare bedroom, plugged into the uh, network cable, um, and running. And basically, what I do is when I have it home, I use remote desktop connection to access it from the Mitar Lux. A lot of times, I'll do that to. Uh, edit videos on this thing because it's got a whole lot more graphics power than the Mitara Lux at the moment. So I'll remote into this thing I'll use it sometimes long, alongside the Mitara Lux edit videos. But anyways, I remote it into it tonight and there's two things I was doing. I was exporting a video in the video editing software and also I was transferring some data off of the data drive to Mitara Lux. And I noticed both were incredibly slow. I mean, even for this computer, very, very slow. And I pulled up Task Manager and I noticed the uh, Solid State Drive, the boot drive, was constantly showing 100% active time. It wasn't really transferring hardly any data, but it was showing 100% active time. And I was like, oh crap, this, must, this bug must be hitting this system. So I pulled up Crystal Disk Info, and it was showing the SSD was hot, like 62, 63 degrees Celsius, something like that. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but I took a screenshot of it, and I mean, you you gotta see this. This all state drive was showing 100% active time. It was being ran to death. It literally, and I know these are probably bad word for YouTube. I'm sorry, YouTube, but it literally killed this SSD. It, it completely just killed it. One thing I noticed was, um, what was strange was the Crystal Disk Info was saying the drive was healthy. It still had 91% of health. So I didn't think the drive was done for. So I uh, I shut the system down. Matter of fact, the first I noticed I actually plug, unplugged the power cord to shut immediately shut it down. And I brought it in here and hooked it up and took a look and what was weird was on occasion it would do this with the C drive which is CSSD but other times it was doing it with my D drive my hard disk drive in this thing it was showing 100% active time um, active utilization but hardly any data transfer now the hard drive of course it's a lot more durable in that sense solid state drives you constantly write into them it, it wears them out and I think what happened here is it fried this contour. So more or less what happened was um, as I was checking update history, the system began to just randomly blue screen. Just It would just crash. And it seemed like it was weird. Windows Update kept trying to install a Wi-Fi driver update on this thing, and it was crashing. Like I said, I don't know for sure what the link there was. But it seemed like something in Windows was eating up the SSD. And also trying to eat up the hard drive. Again, the hard drive took it like a champ. Hard drive's just fine, thankfully, because it's got my files on it. But what happened was the system crashed like three or four times. And I was trying to get get a handle on things. And then all of a sudden, uh, the system reset into recovery. And went through start repair, and start repair said, "Oh, we can't find any issues." And it went to restart. Actually, no, no, take that back. 
Oh, it said it was actually it was correcting disk errors and it might take over an hour to complete. But then I noticed, I noticed suddenly the system just locked up. And it stayed locked up. No response from the keyboard. It, it froze. So I reset it. And then um, the computer literally said no boot device fell. I'm like, wonderful. So I pulled the SSD out and I use my handy dandy USB 3 to NVMe bridge device. Um, this is what I use to back up NVMe drives. And I noticed that the LED on the adapter, it's a bright blue LED, lit up, but the red LED on this SSD was not illuminated at all. It was basically dead. Disk management didn't recognize it as anything. And in fact, when I reinstalled this SSD back into the system, just to see if I could even see it from the, the UEFI setup utility, the system would hang at post. Like, it, it, this thing's, it fried it. Yeah, you, like you can't make this stuff up. So, as an emergency fix, I grabbed one of my 512 gig SATA SSDs. That's all I had. I didn't have any NVMe drives on hand. So I put a two and a half inch SATA SSD in this thing just to get it back up and running. And right now, um, the task manager is looking normal. So, for example, you see, for example, the C drive and the D drive are showing they're, they're idle. There's nothing crazy going on. <clears throat> but yeah, it was so bizarre. Um, basically, something in Windows was causing this thing to um, heavily utilize the C drive and the D drive. Who knows? Maybe it was a virus. I don't. Honestly, I don't know if it was a virus from malware. If it was a bad update from Windows, because the funny thing is, this thing. I didn't realize how bad out of date it was. When I brought it home, I thought it had 23H2, but actually it still had 22H2 on it. But the funny thing is, everything was working just fine and dandy, but as soon as I update, updated it to uh, 25H2, that's when I started having issues. So it's almost like when Windows in support or the feature build in support, maybe it's not such a bad thing because, hey, at that point, Microsoft stops meddling with your computer as if they own it. And I've posted videos on this channel in the past criticizing Microsoft for behaving this way. In other words, force installing UEFI firmware updates on some OEM machines through Windows Update. And in a way, I think maybe a bad driver got installed. I don't, honestly, I don't know. But I do think that in a way, what I would call Microsoft meddling killed this SSD. I mean, it was showing 91% health. Now, what was crazy is, and I'll do this side by side, I want you to look at this. The right, the, the total rights done to this SSD versus the Mid-Tower Lux. Now, the Mid-Tower Lux has a Samsung SSD that was donated by a viewer. And if you look, it's showing 9%, it's showing 9% health. It's in good condition. It's working fine. Um, yet, the SSD from the Portacube, <clears throat> at the moment, it, aside from running hot, it was showing healthy. So, yeah, um... Maybe it caused the controller on this SSD to, to glitch. And I've used SPCC or SPSSDs in a lot of systems, actually. Um, really, let me think about it. So the majority of what I've used from SP is um, SATA SSDs, because, of course, a lot of computers I refurbish are, of course, too old for NVMe drives, so they get... Uh, SATA SSDs and I've never had a callback or return or any known issues with them and up to now it was smooth sailing with their NVMe drives and 
This doesn't mean I would not choose one of their NVMe drives again. However, in hindsight, probably what I would do, and I'm going to do this, in fact, with the Metower Lux and probably the Black Max at a later point, is uh, install heat sinks on the SSDs because I think part of what led to this was overheating these things. Now, I do keep a watch on temps on the SSDs. And for example, Mid Tower Lux, I've never had any issues with the drive getting too hot because I guess having a fan near it helps a lot. But in the, court, in the case of the Porta Cube system, there's not as much airflow, and I think that SSD ended up overheating. So, yeah, um, in a way, I'm a little nervous um, for the fact that it did it to the data drive as well. And of course, I have a little SSD. It's a one terabyte NVMe SSD DAG. Actually, it's inside of a USB 3 or USB Type C uh, enclosure that I use as like a giant flash drive in a way. Um, and in the past, it's usually I usually keep it attached to the Mid Tower Lux when I'm home or this thing when I'm at work. And also, it does concern me a little bit about the Mid Tower Lux Black Max, my parent system. I just recently pushed it up to 11125H2, and it has a Western Digital 256 gig um, SSD, uh, NVMe SSD in it. But my parents have not had any issues, so it could have been something totally unrelated. Could have been a coincidence. Still, though, it's really, really bizarre. And I figured I'd share this with y'all. Um, <clears throat> just, I guess, sort of a PSA or being on the lookout kind of deal. So yeah, I'll tell you what a week it's been. I mean, getting a failed CPU um, for... Um, I mean, what a freaking week this has been. Last week, um, I ordered a brand new AMD Ryzen 7 5700G APU for the Mid-Tire Lux, and five minutes in, it, it totally just quits working. Yeah, I um, mean, I'll have a video on that if I haven't already posted it. But yeah, uh, that... Some other things, and of course, this. Just just puts ice on the cake. And of course, it happens literally the night before I go back to work. But yeah, anyways, I did want to share that with y'all because, yeah, I don't think this was just an SSD failure. I think something led to this thing failing like that. And perhaps it could have been that bug in Windows Update. I don't know for sure. Okay, everybody, so to wrap up this video, I'm going to give y'all a little update on things. So, took the system in today. And it was already finished up for the most part, but I did have to install a couple other pieces of software and all that good stuff. And I opened Windows Update to check for updates. And literally, as soon as it begun to install updates, bam, blue screen. Well, technically black screen. I mean, some genius at Microsoft thought it would be a great idea to change the color of the stop error page. But yeah, it, it black screened. And um, so I restarted it and went back into Windows. And um, <clears throat> as soon as they went to try to update this Intel Wi Fi driver, bam, blue screen again. So I'm like, all right, we're going to play this game again. So the system restarts again. This time I go online. I don't open Windows Update this time, I go online. And download the troubleshooter tool, which Microsoft says is out of date, but still works for 25H2. It's where you can hide updates to stop Windows Update from force installing them. Because somebody at Microsoft doesn't seem to understand that it's not the best idea to force install drivers. I mean, the wireless was working fine. It was connected to Wi-Fi when it downloaded this update, which caused it to start crashing. Again... Microsoft meddling. They need to cut it out. That's all I can say. But um, I went in <clears throat> and hid this update. Went back into Windows Update. And it's like magic. No more issues. Makes me wonder if perhaps overnight um, last week. This thing was was trying to install that Intel wireless adapter driver and causing it to blue screen over and over and over again. Who knows? That's what it was doing the previous night before 
the Salsate drive let loose. It was just crash, reset, and a few minutes later, crash, reset. And it was all NDIS, uh, it was all NDIS.sys um, stop errors, or most of them were. I think some others started to crop up once this thing started to self corrupt or self corrupt. You know what's even more crazy? About a couple of so weeks back, I tried to force update the Mid Tower Lux to Windows 11 25 H2. And the crazy thing was, I could launch the installer and, and begin the installation process, but upon the first restart, bam, it would crash. And then it would have to undo changes and put everything back the way it was. You know what the Mid Tower Lux and the Porta Cube both have in common? The Porta Cube has a wireless adapter, it's a PCI Express wireless adapter, but on it, it's basically an M.2 wireless card. It's an Intel Wi Fi card. Mid Tower Lux on the motherboard, guess what it has? An M.2 wireless card manufactured by, I don't know, Intel. And in fact, I think it's the exact same freaking card. It's an Intel Wi Fi card that has Bluetooth built in. Yeah. So, I'm thinking perhaps. There's some sort of compatibility issue with a driver that Microsoft is trying to force install on computers or just some sort of incompatibility issue between this Intel Wi-Fi adapter and Windows 11 25 H2. This is weird, guys. Um, perhaps the solid state drive in the port cube was about to fail, but I'm thinking something fishy was going on. I do think, again, it was Microsoft meddling. Microsoft force and selling drivers on the system they think they own. News check, Microsoft. Just because your operating system is installing, is installing a computer does not grant you ownership of that computer to do whatever the heck you want with it. Get that straight, please. And stop wrecking up computers like this. And, of course, the Porta Cube. Of course, meets the Microsoft Elite class requirements for Windows 11. So, Microsoft, they'll, they'll meddle with it. They'll try to force update it to newer versions of Windows 11. So, I guess in a way, those of you out there who are forcing installing Windows 11 on your older systems that don't meet the Elite class requirements, that's probably an advantage because you will never have to worry about Microsoft force installing a new feature build on your system because, oh, it's not an Elite class certified system, as I call it. But yeah, crazy stuff. So... Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.